Hey everyone, how's it going? So with this video, we're going to focus on our first organic chemistry reaction, hydrohalogenation of alkenes. Throughout this video, we're going to talk about intermediates, stability, carbocations, and more. When it comes to studying organic chemistry reactions, especially those centered around a specific functional group, we try our best to focus on trends of that functional group. In the case for alkenes, it's electrophilic addition meaning that the electrophile that the alkene is going to react with is going to get added to the double bond, saturating it. And each of the carbons of that double bond are going to have a new bond to a new group. As a reminder, a nucleophile is something that is electron rich. An electrophile is something that is electron deficient. So when we draw reaction arrows, we always go from the nucleophile to the electrophile. When we move on and look at our very first example for organic chemistry reactions with alkenes, it's important for us to identify the nucleophile and electrophile. Our first example is hydrohalogenation of alkenes. So in this case, we have an alkene reacting with a hydrogen halide. In this case, it's hydrogen chloride. Now, the product of this reaction is a haloalkane. So we do this reaction in a polar solvent and we need to identify the electrophile and nucleophile. In this case, the electrophile is gonna be that hydrogen on the hydrogen halide because the halide is pooling on the electron density from that hydrogen so much that the hydrogen is electron deficient. The double bond pi electrons is electron rich. So our alkene is a nucleophile and our hydrogen halide, especially the region with the hydrogen, is our electrophile. Just because we were able to identify what the nucleophile and the electrophile was for this reaction doesn't mean we know how the product is going to be. We have to analyze regioselectivity, stereochemistry, and stability of the intermediate to get a good picture on how the product is going to turn out. So let's dive into talking about carbocations, Makarovnikov law for regioselectivity, and the possibility of rearrangement. Nucleophilic pi electrons attack the electrophilic hydrogen of the hydrogen halide. That hydrogen is going to get attached to one of the double bond carbons, leaving the other one with an unhybridized p orbital, so it's going to have a positive charge. This is what we call a carbocation. But there's also a few factors that can make a carbocation, or this intermediate, more stable, such as inductive and hyperconjugation. Inductive effect revolves around the fact that alkyl groups are weak electron donating groups. We'll talk about this later, but just understand that when it comes to talking about different functional groups, alkyl groups tend to give up a lot of their electron density in cases that it could. So in this case, we have a carbon with a positive charge. And so the more alkyl groups or carbons we have around that uh, carbocation, it's gonna help limit or decrease the effect of that positive charge. So this is why we tend to have that methyl is the weakest and tertiary carbocations or a carbocation that's connected to three other alkyl groups is more stable than one that's connected to three other hydrogens is because the alkyl groups can donate and donate electron density to help decrease the power of that charge. Our conjugation is also going to lower the power of that positive charge, but it does it a little differently. Instead of doing it through a sigma bond or a immediate connection, this works for a slight overlap between the unhybridized p orbital and neighboring sp3 hybridized orbitals. So if we have a hydrogen, we don't have that sp3 hybridized orbital, but if we have an alkyl group, we do. By that slight overlap, it decreases the charge or the power of that positive charge. So just imagine with a tertiary carbocation, we have three sp3 hybridized orbitals that are slightly overlapping with the unhybridized p orbital, helping to stabilize that positive charge. So this is why moving forward, if we have the chance to form a tertiary or a secondary carbocation when we might have a primary or a methyl, we're gonna find ways to do so to help the reaction be more stabilized in the intermediate, in this case, which is a carbocation. We've run into a small little problem. We talked about carbocations and the things that make them more stabilized, but when that pi electrons attacks the 
electrophil like hydrogen of the hydrogen halide, where is that hydrogen going to go? Which double bond carbon is it going to get attached to? This is where we talk about regioselectivity and Markovnikov's law. The hydrogen is going to get added to the double bond carbon with the most hydrogens, or the carbon that is less substituted. Both those things mean the same thing. Because by doing so, we're going to have the carbocation on the carbon that allows us to have the more stable carbocation intermediate. For example, look at one propene. If we put that hydrogen on the first carbon or the most left carbon, we're going to have the carbocation on that center carbon giving us a secondary carbocation. If we had it flipped, we would have a primary carbocation. So by following Markovnikov's law, we can have a more stable intermediate and this is why we have to focus on where that hydrogen is getting added when we look at our molecule. Animation that you keep on seeing below is the last step to hydrohalogenation. So let's go back to our original example and put all the pieces together. So the nucleophilic pi electrons are going to attack the electrophilic hydrogen or the hydrogen halide and rip the hydrogen off the hydrogen halide. This is going to create a carbocation intermediate where the hydrogen is going to get added to one of the double bond carbons. Since both of the double bond carbons in this example are substituted equally, it doesn't really matter which one it gets added to. We have a carbocation get formed. When we rip that hydrogen off of the hydrogen halide, the electrons are going to get thrown onto the halide. This is going to form a halide ion. The halide ion is going to attack the carbocation, forming our haloalkane. In this case, it's going to form 2-chlorobutane. We've officially shown two examples, one with trans-2-butene and another with 1-propene. In 1-propene, we're going to care about Markovnikov's law since that hydrogen is going to get added to the first carbon or the leftmost carbon, where in our last example, it didn't matter where the hydrogen got added to because the substitution on both of the double bond carbons were the same. But there's another thing we have to consider when talking about carbocations, and that's the possibility of methyl or hydride shifts. So here's the situation. We have that double bond reacting with that hydrogen halide, and we know it should form that carbocation, that one that's listed under minor intermediate. But the major intermediate is actually a different carbocation. How? When we have the possibility of creating an even more stable carbocation through either moving an adjacent, only an adjacent hydrogen or methyl group, we will. We do a hydride or a methyl shift, moving that over to create a more stable carbocation. Let's look at two scenarios. In the first scenario, we have a 1-2 hydride shift, meaning that if we move that hydrogen from the adjacent carbon, we can get a tertiary carbocation when we originally had a secondary. If we have a 1-2 methyl shift, this is where we don't have an adjacent hydrogen to move, but we have an adjacent methyl group that we can move. By doing so, we also go from a secondary to a tertiary carbocation. So any time that we can stabilize our intermediate in any way that benefits or makes it even more stable, it's going to function. Now, this cannot happen from two or three carbons or uh, hydrogens way down the molecule. This can only be associated with adjacent relationships, and it can only happen once. So this is another way in which reactions can stabilize their intermediates. I hope this video helped you learn a lot about hydrohalogenation, carbocations, radioselectivity with Markovnikov's law, and the things that go into learning about organic chemistry reactions. In the next video, we're going to dive more into reactions with alkenes, going about a little bit of a faster pace now that we understand the things that influence these reactions. But I also just want to take this time to say thank you to one of my sponsors. Righty is one of the amazing companies that's perfect for out-home learning. They create these black and white neon boards that can be placed on into any surface and removed without damaging the wall and be replaced. And so lately, I've been using them to plan out my graphics and the things that I have to do throughout the week. I'm also going to leave their link alongside the link to my infographics in the description below. So I hope it helps, and I hope you guys have a great day.